It's about a leader that understands you can't politicize every single thing like Gavin Newsom wants to do. He's not doing the job. Using uh, bright lights and cash giveaways and state control as a mirage for a broken fate state government that fails to serve California in the most basic ways. I don't think we should do mandates. Uh, I think the governor's COVID management was an absolute disaster. If we don't break this pattern of government overreach into our daily lives, then we're going to get stuck with this over and over and over. Each of the four Republicans who participated in a debate that aired on KTVU last night, hoping they're driving home a message that Governor Newsom isn't doing a good job of handling the coronavirus pandemic and that he should be removed from office. Sonoma State University political science professor David McEwen is here now to talk more about last night's debate. So, David, give us your initial thoughts on how those four men did and did one of them in particular stand out in your mind? All right, so in a debate like this, you have the opportunity to set the narrative. Obviously, Ronald Reagan's 11th commandment, don't speak ill of another Republican, that ruled the day. That was important for all of those candidates there. Now, Kevin Falconer, the former mayor of San Diego, has been ahead in this race until recently. We had a deadline tonight at 5 p.m. for reports of money. We'll pay very close attention to radio talk show host Larry Elder to see how well he did, because Elder appears to be in the lead. He wasn't there last night. So Falconer's presence was important. He wasn't hit hard. He wasn't attacked, but he's kind of a moderate for Republicans. So he's someone who is going to appeal to that no party preference voter. That's an important component. But look, Republicans are going to nationalize this race. By nationalizing this race, they're able to do that once we move past Andrew Cuomo in New York. And that's going to challenge the Newsom administration and the Newsom team. So watch the next couple of weeks as the Newsom team pivots. And we start to see a different component to this race because this really is the political story and the political election, the political event of the year. So they all went after Gavin Newsom. Uh, right. Were they effective? And also you touched on this a little bit, but why didn't they go after the leading Republican candidate, talk show host Larry Elder? Well, they're scared of Larry Elder and has almost 900,000 Twitter followers. And he's going to show uh, that he made a, a bit of money both in terms of trying to get on the ballot and then subsequently from that. So Elder is someone to be feared. Republicans have to worry about do they coalesce around one candidate or not. Look, and for Democrats and for Gavin Newsom, there's a lot at stake here. I mean, it cannot be overstated. Uh, the governor has had a difficult moment, set of moments under COVID. Republicans are going to set the narrative with three more debates that they're able to do this. So what do Democrats do? How do they respond? What happens nationally? What happens with the vice president, Kamala Harris? What happens with the speaker? Because all of that will roll into really ballots going out in less than two weeks. This is a fundamental change. We've seen this with some polling data. And as a result, we have really a race here where Gavin Newsom has a lot of money and a strong team and has the ability to communicate and fight back. He hasn't been able to do that this week so far. Why do you think that Elder, Newsom, or for that matter, Caitlyn Jennings, all decided to skip the debate last night? Well, look, when we look at Caitlyn Jenner, who's down in Australia cutting that reality show, she's going she's gonna to poll less than, say, uh, 3%, 5%, 6%. She's going to be down in the single digits. Th these, are, these are what we might call B or C list celebrities. They're really skim milk candidates. They're candidates for the Republicans that are going to be in those single digits. Larry Elder is someone who has built a media presence presence for years. He's someone who can roll forward and pro and provide a vote that's around 20 percent or plus 20 percent. And in 2003, that led many Republicans to get out of the race late or not campaign. Gavin Newsom needs Democrats to turn out. He needs Democrats to turn out early and often, and they need to really nationalize the race themselves by building a presence. Gavin Newsom can do that. He destroyed John Cox in 2018, but we haven't seen that team and that presence yet so far in this recall, a recall that's right around the corner in many ways in September 14th. All right. So how do you see this playing out? The latest polls have 48 percent of Californians against the recall, 46 percent in favor of the recall and 6 percent undecided. It seems to me that based on the polls, this really could go either way, correct? Yeah, Frank, this this really is interesting. This is a blue state. It's a Democratic state. It's a state where 46 percent of all voters registered as Democrats. But obviously, Gavin Newsom needs to draw his team out, draw his base out, get his voters out. So this is about turnout, turnout, turnout. But it's also more than that. This is also about the Biden agenda, the 2022 midterms. 
the, the, the threshold here for Democrats is huge. Republicans sense that, and they sense that opportunity and that momentum. And this is turning into a coin flip, and that should not be the case in so deeply a blue state. And as a result, this is, these next couple of weeks are going to be hugely important to Democrats' fortunes national, nationally, to Gavin Newsom, and really to the Republican Party and what comes next as we set up the 2022 national midterms next year. All right, David McEwen, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us tonight. Fascinating stuff here. Thanks. Thank you very much. Nice to see you, Frank. Yeah, you too.